Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jonathan and in today's video we're going to be looking at a super compact minimalist wallet from Aviator called the Slide. Okay, so Aviator are a company based in Germany and the product reflects German engineering. Have to say the quality here is absolutely top notch. It feels really well engineered and really well made. And it's been really carefully thought through in terms of how it works. This version is a carbon fiber version and as such, it looks really nice. It's carbon fiber on the front and the back. It's got a money clip here, which is also carbon fiber. And it also has a unique feature, and that is a slide out drawer. The slide out drawer is what makes this wallet really interesting. And we're gonna go into that in some detail in a moment. In addition to that, to get the cards out, and there's one in here at the moment, we have a pull tab. And I've seen a lot of wallets with pull tabs and sometimes they are awkward to pull and awkward for the cards to push back. But that's not the case with this one. This one works very smoothly and uh, functions really well. And that is due to the detail that's gone into the design on this wallet, as we shall see. You'll notice we've got some thickness here for the drawer. And this drawer, by the way, is made out of machined aluminium. I mean, it's really, really nicely made, is this. It almost feels plastic when you first look at it. And then when you feel, you can feel the temperature is cool and you realize it's aluminium. And you'll notice the drawer has a machined recess in there, which is why when you want to bring the cards out, it, they come out so smoothly because there isn't unnecessary tension or friction on the strap because it's got a cutout in the aluminium uh, pull out drawer and it means that when you want to pull the drawer out it's not restricted by rubbing against the uh, pull tab so it's clearly been cleverly thought through you'll also notice there's a little bit of thickness to the front uh, face of the wallet and that's because in there are concealed some ways of adjusting the wallet by altering the strap length of the elastic for the wallet itself and also this nylon pull strap. And to show you that, I will need to dismantle it, which I will do in a moment. But first, let's have a look at putting some cards in here. Now, Aviator say that this wallet can take up to 20 cards. Now, if you're carrying 20 cards, you probably need to uh, re-evaluate your card collection because uh, that is an awful lot. For me, as you probably know, if you've seen some of my other uh, wallet review videos, I only carry four cards day to day, plus a couple of other cards, such as a donor card and a driving license. I've got blank cards, as you might expect. And the, the first thing I should point out is to put the cards in is really simple. They just literally, you just edge them into there and slide them in. And there you go. And I've also tried this with embossed cards, which I use, and they work just as well. And if you want to access the cards, you simply pull on the pull tab and then fan them out. And then you find the card you want. Um, if necessary, you can put everything back, use the card, and then just literally slide it back like that. So it works really well. You can also just push it out there. If you want to maybe to tap on a contactless reader, you can just push the card out and do that. And you can see from the profile here that it looks really neat. Now let's have a look at the drawer. That slides out without affecting the cards. It doesn't pull the cards with it. It feels totally separated, which is brilliant. And you literally put your thumb there and slide it out. It can come out all the way. And then you just need to do that to put it back. But I think in most cases, you'd only pull it out halfway. It's designed for coins. I understand in terms of American currency, it can take four quarters. In the UK, it will take 
most of the coins we do but the most important coin it needs to take is a pound coin and unfortunately the pound coin is quite thick this pound coin is three millimeters and the depth of this tray is 2.9 millimeters and i think the reason for that is it's got a a soft layer here stuck on and that's to reduce the noise of rattle that takes away a little bit of the thickness and although the pound coin seems to go in fine you'll notice if you look on the edge there that there is a little gap here so it doesn't fit perfectly unfortunately the other option is to get the thicker coin tray this one has a depth of 2.9 millimeters there is a thicker one with a depth of 5.2 millimeters and when you get something with that much thickness it also gives you lots of other options when you start to think about other things you might want to put in here apart from coins you might be familiar with this this is the victorinox tool card and this is quite an old one i've had this a while as you can see this um this has some branding on it from the uk distributor what i've found is if you do try and put things in here that are not cards they do fit but it makes it it makes it just a bit awkward in terms of getting the cards out so i would avoid the temptation to put something like this in there but when you've got the drawer here what interests me is taking the parts from here that I really like and putting them in here and that would be the scissors and also the pen and you can buy this pen as a spare product from Victorinox if you didn't want to raid one of these or an existing knife and then you've got a very compact pen that you've got with you at all times. I don't really use a toothpick, so I wouldn't be putting that in there. <clears throat> the tweezers uh, I do use, so they fit in there. And there is a file here which you could choose to put in, um, but I'm not going to do that. So we're starting to put in some things here that, to me, have more use than just coins. You could put in a couple of emergency coins as well if you wanted to and i also thought you might want to put in something like a safety pin or two um i've also dismantled a couple of multi-tools and have a few spares kicking around and for example you might want to put in a miniature screwdriver and that would fit in there really well or you could go the next stage and you could if you wanted to perhaps put in a knife blade which might come in useful a little bit awkward to carry that obviously so uh, that might be something you don't want to do the scissors though i think are really good and they fit really well in here and this configuration would also be suitable for carrying on an aircraft because you can carry scissors um, as long as we've got a blade length in the UK at least of under four centimeters which this clearly does and uh, there's no knife here so that is a good option for traveling on an aircraft and you might instead want to replace some of these with perhaps an SD card and this one could also carry a micro SD card and I was rather hoping it would carry the uh, slim optics glasses i carry as emergency glasses but they just won't quite fit in there which is unfortunate let's just put that in there to show you how it fits there we go so we've got some interesting things in there there is a slight problem in that they rattle so that's not ideal i dare say if it was really fully packed you could you could stop that but nevertheless, it's quite an interesting way of uh, carrying some very slim EDC items. And if you look at the slightly thicker version, which is uh, 5.2 mil deep, then that gives you even more options. You might, for example, choose to put some meds in there so you've got easy access to them and make sure you have them with you at all times. So I should point out, because it's been pointed out to me in a comment on a previous video, that if in America you carry your medication loose, i.e. not in the original packaging, then you are in fact committing an offence. So you might want to bear that in mind. So yeah, that's kind of really interesting, I think, as a way of carrying things. So if you don't want coins or that sort of thing, let me know in the comments what 
you would recommend for this drawer if you've got any ideas as to what you would put in there be really interested to find out you might want to put your cash in here so here we have uh, some cash you could put that in there no problem And then you've got another way of carrying the cash. And I, I quite like that. It doesn't add any weight, so to speak. And although you've got a cash clip here, you might want to put your cash in there and maybe use this for receipts. Or you might want to put your cash there and use this little drawer for receipts. So you've got some options there. Um, coins, some basic flat EDC stuff, um, or some cash. Could also put some stamps in there for emergencies and things like that. Things I also carry in my wallet is a tile, a slim, to help me find it if I leave it. And this will fit in here. And you could do something like that. So that is not a bad option. And because it's quite a smooth product, it kind of fits really well and doesn't seem to affect the slide in, slide out. You can see there is a money clip on the back. Let's just see that in action. I've got here a 10 pound note and I'm just gonna fold it into thirds. See how that works. And that fits in there very nicely indeed. So that is a really nice way of carrying the currency. Just to give you an idea of that width there, we're talking about 45 mil. Um, anything wider than that, you would have to fold it again, because as you can see, the elastication actually disappears through the plate here and here. So that is the maximum width. So this is obviously great for cash. And actually, I think it's quite a neat solution. But you could, as I've mentioned, also put receipts there if that's what you would prefer. In terms of weight, let's have a look at that. So I'm going to take all the cards out. I'm going to leave the drawer in. I'm taking the cash. Um, and we are looking at 43 grams which is slightly over one and a half ounces. So it is really lightweight. So just looking at the dimensions of the wallet, we have here 54 millimeters by, what have we got here, by 85 millimeters. And obviously the thickness depends on what you put in it. If we compare this wallet to the one I'm currently using, which is the Bellroy Slim Sleeve in nylon, I thought this was actually a compact wallet, but when you compare it with the Aviator slide, it makes the Bellroy look quite large. As you can see, it's a lot thinner. It's literally credit card size, in fact. So it is a very compact form. In terms of thickness, it's kind of similar. It depends what you put in it, obviously. Uh, this one has the benefit of a few different access pockets and in here I've got a, a notepad and a tiny pen here, um, which is a Mimo pen. And um, I also have the tile slim in there and I put in a few more cards in there. So um, I still like this form factor, um, but I'm going to give this one a try and just see how that works out. When it comes to pocket carry, you can see it is super compact and ideal for front pocket carry. It really, in terms of size, it can't really get any smaller than this. In order to fit in 20 cards, um, there needs to be some adjustment because as this gets fatter, you would need to adjust this pull tab and obviously the elastic needs to be extended slightly. And the way to do that is to dismantle it. And in the box, uh, we received a torque screwdriver and we have here eight torque screws. So let's take it apart and see what's behind the scenes. Okay. These screws are super tiny and if you lose them, 
you will be pleased to know that you can buy them from Aviator um, as spare parts, as you can for pretty much everything associated with this wallet. What we've got here is a way by which you can increase the length on the elastic by three steps. So these pins can move to here and that will extend it a little bit and then you can move that one to the outside and that would extend it by another stage and here is the way the pull tab fits in and you can alter that so this is made of some form of they call it acrylic glass some form of plastic material you can get an aluminium version of this it is quite expensive but if you really are into premium products you can replace this section here for aluminium. So that was a little bit fiddly, but when you think about it, you probably only ever need to do that once. So this is changed in that I have reduced the tension on this by just one stage, and it does feel a little bit looser, and that's even smoother than it was before. Really, it's for, I think, five cards or more, but let's just see how that works so cards go in very easily there we go and the money clip is not quite as tight which I actually quite like because I, I felt on the on the tighter setting that the money clip was just a little bit on the tight side and this is much easier to use if you like this sort of more contemporary, minimalist, slim style wallet, there are very few on the market that can compete with this. I should also point out that this wallet was sent to me by Aviator. They reached out, having seen my channel and some of my other reviews, and asked me if I would review uh, this wallet. So I was more than happy to give it a test drive. Just a couple of final points about this wallet. It can be shipped free worldwide, so it is quite easy to get a hold of. It comes from Germany. Each one is hand assembled. It's actually won a design award in Germany, and when you look at it, you can see why. And it comes with a lifetime warranty. So there you have it for the Aviator Wallet. I hope that's been of interest. If you enjoy this sort of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. You can do that here by clicking this link. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.